Bloodborne is a game that is born from the blood, made game by the blood, undone by Sony doing absolutely nothing with this franchise. But I do not want to start this video off by being negative about Sony, as they are finally putting the work in and giving us games that we've all been asking for, like uh, remastering Horizon Zero Dawn. Thank you Sony, this is very cool. Now Bloodborne is an absolutely fantastic game, and a game that each time I play it, I seem to like more and more, which is exactly why I decided to play it again just to see if this game is as good as I remember and to ask a very simple question. Is Bloodborne worth playing in the year 2024? I know this is a stupid question but please work with me here, ok? Thank you. The story of Bloodborne starts off with you who plays as John Bloodborne who is a man slash woman with the ability to kill beasts, a ability given to them by special blood. You are what is called a hunter and it is your goal to kill as many beasts as possible. Also you are connected to a dream and in this dream you can find a doll and a not so creepy old man that definitely didn't do some weird stuff to the doll. Also on your journey of killing these beasts you will kill some beastly boss fights and these boss fights give you insight and you might be wondering what on earth is insight and I'm here to tell you that insight is the equivalent of watching the ancient aliens tv show or watching enough conspiracy theory tiktok videos to the point where the government simply can't hide them aliens from you anymore. Yes that is correct, this game is about them aliens. That's right, aliens came down to this world and did some alien juju which is why the world is all messed up and very weird. Now if you have played any of the other From Software Souls like games, you would pretty much have a good idea of how From Software tells their stories and this game is no different in any way or form. The story is very hands off and feels very optional even though it's kind of not. The majority of the story's lore is told through excellent world building. Every enemy, every boss encounter, every NPC is there deliberately. Enemy design is done with the purpose of telling a story and I think this type of storytelling is absolutely bloody excellent. Now by telling the story like this the game is able to focus on the one important thing about the game and that is of course the gameplay. However this doesn't mean that you should undermine the glorious beauty of this game's story. The lore is deep and will fascinate you. It is interesting and it is worth learning more about this game's lore and also some of the dialogue in this game is absolutely badass. We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Now the gameplay of Bloodborne is absolutely fantastic. I would describe it as being very familiar to all of the other Souls like From Software games, yet completely unique in almost every way. You have a basic light and heavy attack. You also have a dodge which looks very cool in this game and is much more awesome than all of the other dodges in the From Software Souls like games. And yet the only time we get this dodge again is in Elden Ring as an Ash of War. This is very disappointing. You also have the ability to to parry and block attacks, but we'll get into that a little bit later. One important thing to note is related to the heavy attack. In this game, you can charge up the heavy attack to do some extra damage. However, this charging of the heavy attack is not just there to do extra damage, as it is practical in the way that you cannot do a backstab without it. In this game, you don't simply go around the enemy and stab them in the back. The way the backstabs work in Bloodborne is by smacking the enemy on the back. This will cause them to fall down and and spread their ass cheeks for you, which allows you to penetrate from behind. This sounds sus, but is 100% true. However, the biggest differences in Bloodborne comes in the form of its weapons. First off, you have your main hand weapons, and these weapons from software went absolutely crazy with, because instead of giving you a singular weapon that does something cool, from software had a brilliant idea by taking two weapons and combining them into one. Absolutely genius. And because this game was not made by a bunch of idiots, these modes have actual reasons for being in the game. To explain what I mean, let's look at the saw cleaver. You see, on the one side you have sharp edgy bits, on the other side you have a smooth sharp blade. The edgy bits is made to do more damage against beasts, meaning that you would switch to that mode if you want to fight some beasts. And while the blade side does uh, practically more damage against everything else except for beasts, this is the genius that lies within this weapon design. And just to make this clear, this game has a 
shit ton of weapons and all of these modes have different unique abilities and perks added to them to make them better against certain enemies. And this is how you make a game's combat more interesting simply by making the weapons unique. Now when we talk about the offhand weapon this is where things get interesting and by interesting I mean it gets a whole lot American because this game has guns. You see in most of the other FromSoft Souls-like games your main offhand weapon is probably a shield but because you are not a little bitch in Bloodborne you get a gun. And yet again there is a wide variety of offhanded weapons to choose from including a shield but again these shields don't act like they do in the other FromSoft Souls-like games. Now there are two types of guns that you get in this game. Some of them are made for doing some damage while others are made purely for parrying. You get guns like the flamethrower and the arm cannon which is purely there for damage. It does a shit ton of damage but also wastes a whole lot of bullets. And then you have most of the other type of weapons which are there purely to do parrying. This does not mean that they don't do any damage because they do some damage but they are mostly there for parrying. And if you put two and two together you will realize that Bloodborne took away the shield for all those little bitches that cower behind their shields in the Dark Souls games. Because in this game you have to be aggressive and you have to be a bloody badass. This also links to another key feature that this game has and that is the ability to regain your health back directly after you've been slapped. Most of the times when you get punched in the face you have a small window of opportunity to get some of that health back. This is another way how this game encourages the player to be aggressive and I absolutely love it. Speaking of getting slapped, the enemies in this game are absolutely fantastic, very detailed and well designed and the enemy AI is always fantastic and because this is a From Software game you will get a shit ton of different enemies that all feel unique and interesting to fight. To anybody who is interested in making a video game, if you want to know how to do enemy variety just look at the chat at From Software because they sure as hell know how to make the enemy variety in their games absolutely fantastic and you cannot talk about the enemies without talking about the boss fights in this game. This is a Souls-like game and Souls-like games are pretty much known for their boss fights. So how good are the boss fights in this game? I would say this, the boss fights are consistent, consistently absolutely fantastic. This game has some of the best boss fights in all of the Souls-like From Software games. They are absolutely fantastic but this does not mean that there aren't any stinkers in it because they absolutely are. I do not understand why running after a boss fight and waiting for him to stand still so you can beat his ass is any interesting. There's a boss fight like that in this game. Why are you running? This game also has quite a few boss fights that feel very gimmicky. However, unlike a game like Dark Souls 3, I think that most of the gimmicky boss fights in this game actually work. For example, you fight Rom, who is a giant potato that will constantly spawn spiders. The thing is that Rom himself doesn't do a whole lot of attacks and is practically useless on his own. However, because he has the ability to spawn a whole lot of spiders, it makes the fight way more difficult and way more interesting. And I think that is what makes most of the gimmick boss fights in this game way better than they are in Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 gimmick boss fights just feel way too easy at times. While in Bloodborne, most of these gimmick boss fights actually still present present a challenge. Except for Mikalash. Mikalash just sucks. Now the final big difference in the Bloodborne gameplay comes in the form of the bonfires or the lamp fires, the lanterns. I do not know what they are called. But in this game you cannot rest at these bonfires. You can either go back to the hunter's dream or you just keep on going because you are not a little bitch. This also means that the healing items in this game work different from the other From Soft Souls like games. You you do not get a set amount of healing flasks. Instead, the healing items in this game act like actual items. You will constantly pick them up from the corpses of your fallen enemies, like an absolute sigma. The same goes for the bullets. The key difference in this mechanic is that if you suck at this game, you will constantly need to farm these items. Look, I'm not the one telling you to get good, the game is. I think the overall experience of Bloodborne's gameplay is absolutely fantastic. I love the gameplay in this game. It feels so unique yet very familiar to all of the other From Software Souls like games. And because of this reason, I think it is why so many people think this game is the best From Soft Souls like game out there. And I don't really disagree. Now, the levels in this game are absolutely fantastic as well. This is yet another area in which From Software shows their Sigma mentality. When it comes to making linear levels fun and interesting, From Software is unmatched in the industry. And the way they make these 
level so interesting and fun to explore is pretty simple. Prom Software makes their levels feel way bigger than they actually are through making interesting branching paths. Branching paths in which there is quite a lot to find. And finding these items are important as most of them are pretty useful. From Software also makes use of expert enemy placement, by which the enemies are placed in these levels with intent to make these levels more interesting. And finally, we have the shortcuts. The shortcuts in this game are very important, and the reason why is pretty simple. You cannot rest at the bonfires in this game. Some of these shortcuts are very complex, similar to that of Dark Souls 1, and some of them are pretty basic, but still very valuable. Because you cannot rest at the bonfires, finding these shortcuts are important to make those run back times way shorter, because let's face it, you are going to die. I think the levels in this game are fantastic, fun and very interesting, and probably the best levels out of all the From Software Souls-like games. Now the final thing I want to talk about is just how cool this game looks, because this game has some style. It is probably the most interesting From Soft Souls-like game out there, and I don't say that lightly. Everything from these scary looking cathedrals that makes you feel like you are in Disneyland from hell, to the Bloodborne drip. Everything about this game has style and a certain pizzazz to it that makes it look so cool. And yes, the graphics do not look that fantastic, but I do not care. Bloodborne is an absolutely fantastic game, and it is a shame that Sony doesn't give a shit about this franchise. Now when it comes to the question whether or not Bloodborne is worth playing in the year 2024, the answer is obviously yes. This is one of the best From Software games out there. It is fantastic, and there is a reason why there are so many people that say this is the best From Software game out there. Almost everything about this game absolutely absolutely works and it is why it is such a great experience and absolutely worth experiencing in the year 2024. Now if you have made it this far in the video I would please ask you to consider leaving a like if you've liked this video and please consider subscribing if you want to see more. It helps me understand whether or not people are interested in seeing more of this type of content. That is all I have for today. I thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.